Welcome, everybody, to the Roar Podcast Show. John Smith here with John Rutan. Today we got a, uh, an awesome guest that came in today, Sam Nutter. He's a pastor at Calvary Baptist Church. And uh, go ahead and say hi to everybody here, Hello, Sam. everybody. Um, Sam, we brought you on the show here because uh, obviously you know that we do a lot of politicking in the community. We have uh, other guests uh, in politics, and you're, you're involved in politics as well in the community. You're on the on the Planning Commission? City Planning Commission for the City of Hillsdale and uh, County Board of Canvassers. County Board, so, Which what certifies is that? the elections. That certifies the elections. What, the, what Can you describe that a little bit? Uh, certifying the elections. So what we do is we go through the... Um, we go through the ballots if there's any problems with them to make sure that the uh, spelling or intent. So like when you had the, the Florida issue, the people that were doing that job of picking, you know, was this person trying to vote for this person or this person? Ah, that's the hanging that's what we do. Other than that, we just certify that everything looks good and that everything's been done properly. And okay, because I, I bet the general public probably don't even know what that position is. I had is. no idea what it was until they asked me to do it. What do you do on the Planning Commission? On the Planning Commission, we have, well, we work with ordinances, which <laughs> I, I know is one of your favorite things in all the world. Um, and then uh, we work on the city master plan, which uh, we have a new one as of, I think, a year and a half, two years ago. W what is that? The city master plan, the way that, that the city master plan works is that you you have this basically like outline of what you're trying to do as a city. Like a and goal? Ex yeah, goals. So an example of something that would be in that, and I'll, I'll explain why you want to have one of these. And you may not like the reason, but it's the reason. So you would have, like, one of the things that I uh, we worked hard to make sure was in the master plan is that we want to get rid of all the one-way streets, right? Uh, another thing that made it into the master plan, I believe, is that we want to have as many... Uh, electrical wires underground as oh, possible. Yeah. And these things, if you have them in your master plan, you can get grants and things like that because they, they say, well, is this in your master plan? Is this in your master plan? And you, as long as you're proving that you're trying to work towards something, it's easier to get money. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the purpose well, of that. Since we have you on the show here, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, uh, what was your upbringing like? What got you into religion? Or what? I mean, I don't know if it was from your family or if it's something that your dad did. Or, well, I can, I can start with okay. So my my mother was a um, well, what would we would call a bus kid. So she she came to she went to a Baptist church in uh, she rode the bus. Eastern, she drove the bus. Well, she could walk. She was in well, within walking distance from the church. But in Posen, Illinois, there's this church called Faith Baptist Church, and that's where she um, came to know the Lord and she uh, grew in her faith and eventually met my father. My father. Grew grew up in a, not a non-Christian home, but a nominal Christian home. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went into the Navy because he said, you know, I've got to get away from my friends because they're not, they're not going anywhere fast, you know. And I mean, I've met some of his friends recently and I mean, they're, they're kind of dying off and they're, they're still partying and doing stuff on the weekend. And he, he went and did something with himself. He said, I got to get away from these people or otherwise I'm not going to. So, so they're not doing nothing with themselves? Uh, well, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of, gotcha, uh, gotcha. yeah, yeah, I would say that. I mean, like if you're, if you're living for the weekend at 60, then probably not. You yeah. Know? <laughs> if that's your long-term goal. It, well, it, it sounds <laughs> like if your you, goal is to get trashed on Friday, then you haven't moved past the college phase. <laughs> that's right. You know? Well, it, so, it sounds like your dad had a pretty good head on his shoulders. Well, yeah. So, so he got, he got saved or whatever you want to call it, born again or whatnot in, uh, in the Navy, in, uh, in the ocean. Uh, in the middle of the night because uh, friends had been working on him and talking to him and all this. And so he built this vibrant faith in the middle of the ocean and came back and went right to, to Bible college. And uh, my my his parents introduced him to my mother at the church that they were going to at the time, which was Faith Baptist. So that's where the original, uh, the origin of my faith comes from, is somebody sharing with a sailor Christ and what Christ did for them, and, and, and that sailor, my father, experiencing that for himself. Also, what got you into politics? You So obviously you grew up with, in, a, in a religious background with your family and everything, and with a good head on your shoulders, and you, get, you come off with a good head on your shoulders. What got well, you? Thank you. Well, I mean, the, the parents and and becoming a pastor and it, structurally, it just you know a lot of people would strive for that or or, or be envious of that. Yeah, you you were blessed to have the family that you had. Right, or blessed to to, to have the moral structure. Well, I want to be clear that. though, in case anybody's listening that doesn't have a perfect family, I didn't have a perfect family. I had good parents who wanted to do what's right, and I, that's the key. You have to want to do what's right. The Bible says it is God that works in you both to will and to do according to His good pleasure. Sometimes. Sometimes the only thing prayer you can pray to God is God help me to want to do right, right. because I don't want to do and, right. And and I, I do that now. Like I always sure. talk about my diet. Like I gotta I gotta stop eating the junk food and I gotta I gotta want to quit in order to lose weight. Yeah. Let's be, let's 
It's like how many real. psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? You know, one, but the light bulb you know, has if you to want to change. If you want, if you want to work on your relationship, <laughs> you got to want to work on your relationship. If you want right. to quit drinking, you got to want quit you drinking. Have to want you know, it. like you got to start right there. So, so I was born in Massachusetts in Stoughton, which is a suburb of Boston. My dad had li- moved out there for about two years. Was a a, a school teacher out there. Um, and then they move back. So ministry is a lot like, for those of the, you that don't know, ministry is a lot like um, a lot like the military. It can be, you know, like traveling. You can stay and, in the same spot for a long time, but a lot of a lot of people move, move around. So I was born in Massachusetts, moved back to Illinois. I've lived in Iowa. Uh, I've lived in Northwest Indiana, and we moved to Michigan my last three years of uh, of high school, and I moved to Hillsdale and cool. spent three years here. So I, I call myself an import. I'm not really a townie or whatever you want yeah, to call Yeah, I, I, I am too. I'm yeah, an import yeah, as well. Not too loud because imports don't get accepted very well. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, some people think I'm part of the good old boys club, so you know, I, I've got it. I've got the best, best, best of, both of both worlds, worlds. you know. So, <laughs> well, what got what dived you into politics? I know, like when you're when you do religion, that's like a politics in its own right. And then now you're getting into governmental politics. What got you into wanting to do that? When we lived in Iowa, um, that was during that time. There was the 2000 election, so started listening to Rush Limbaugh because my dad had it on in the background all the time, and I, I always enjoyed. Uh, him. He's very smart, very persuasive, and very thought-provoking. Don't always agree with him, but always enjoy listening. And so that was, I was into it already at like 12 or 13, listening, wow. paying attention, that's watching pretty, the election. Kind of I stayed up till four o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. after the 2000 election, barely made it to school the next day. And so I've just kind of been into it since then. The only time I've gotten out of politics for a while was after Obama won the first time. Gotcha. Uh, or maybe it was the second time. But anyway, I I stopped listening to anything for a good two or three months, and I was like, I, I need to step back from this because this is depressing. <laughs> well, Sam, generally speaking, the average person d- is not involved in, or doesn't really care about politics at the age of 12. But if I'm no. not mistaken, our mm. founding fathers, I, I, they were like 19 years old writing documentation and stuff like that. Well, John Quincy Adams was over like being a diplomat at 14, wasn't he? Yeah, but, but, but part, of the, part of your statement there, right, John, right. is based on your reality. Yeah, that's right. Because my reality was the same thing. When I was growing up, the Vietnam War was going on. And I used to sit with my dad every night and watch Walter Cronkite and watch the war. I remember the Man, Nixon you're impeachment. I, you're an old dude. You know, so I I was very much into what was happening in the world at the same age. I'm, and gener- so I I'm generally that, speaking, I came from the metro area. I mean, that's where most of the people are from in Michigan. I'm just, I generally speak. I know I'm right, talking from it, my reality. I think a lot here. of it is, I think a lot of it has to do with um, upbringing. A lot of it has to do with geographical location. A lot of it has to do with uh, economic I, and status, I, and I don't I don't disagree yeah. with any of that. So I think a I, lot of that. I try to I try to come from the idea that I'm an average Joe, and so since I'm the average Joe, what do I know as far as the average Joe goes? And then I try to relay everybody as the average Joe. I know that's not You're the perpetrating good way. A so many topics I could swerve into right. Uh, right, now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking about education. Dude, uh, I'm thinking you, about you know minorities hate mm-hmm. when I when I start talking in general sense. Sure, oh, they hate it. Well, uh, but realistically you go to Addison School District you go you go to the Addison School and you talk to the average student over there I can almost guarantee the average student does not care about politics and probably a lot of them don't care about religion either yes I, but go to Lumen Christi and see if you have the same sure but I don't know if you take the general public I think the general public will outweigh in numbers than a private school more than likely. Okay. No, sound. I'm going to tell you right now that the, the, the reason I got into politics is because I grew up in an environment where everything was mission focused. So you're trying to see people's lives changed all the time. And, and, and politics is something that affects day to day life. It does. It's not, it's not something that any of us like that. You know, it's a big responsibility. I go and pull a lever or whatever. I've never pulled a lever just for the record. Um, but uh, <laughs> he's I have a, voted. Everybody just don't have a lever. levers anymore. He's pulling I'm, a lever I'm cranking in the my hand over here. here. Um, <laughs> So, but no, th- those things matter though. Those things matter. And and I think that this is one of my passions actually is, uh, is the fact that when it comes to young people and just having a passion for something, our education system has failed in, in, in my opinion. In, here, in the, here. the biggest yeah, thing that it's failed in is that it's failed to instill a desire to learn. 
And that to me is I don't care. I do care if somebody doesn't finish high school or whatever. But what I care most about is does that individual have a desire to learn? Because if they have a desire to learn, they can make it without a but, diploma. Yeah, usually that's because we teach to the test instead of teaching to life. J- John and I do believe there's only two topics that you need in life to, to, to move forward, and that's uh, English and math, really anything else outside of that. I went to a Bible college, and the, the, the chancellor and founder of the college said famously that uh, the most important class that you'll go to— now, this is, mind you, a college for preachers— the most important class that you'll ever attend here is English class. So, yeah, you, if you write smart or, or well, talk smart, yeah, everybody I, will perceive you as being I, smart. I had you three can daughters. Move. I yeah, had, I'm not very smart, but I use big words, and people are like, well... Well, I, I had three daughters, and I used to tell them the same thing. You know, if you speak well and write well, and you can understand what you read, people Present will take, well. That's right. Then people will take you as educated, but you can have a PhD and speak deplorable English, and people will take you as a fool. And you can run for president, too. That's right. Well, well check That's it out. <laughs> I said the word smart, right, which is actually the wrong yes. word to say there, right? Intellectual. Like you, you, you know, well, smart is like a, a sharp prick. Like a sharp, mm-hmm. I mean, a smart is a sharp prick, like, like a, a needle. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like here, I'm using the I'm using the wrong word. You guys said, "Well, you know, I should be speaking well. I should be saying it the right way." Yeah, don't so, speak good. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you, this is just a prime example. I literally asked the lady that was sitting at the desk at the uh, the college fitness center yesterday. I asked her. I was like, "Now, is effect with an e? That's the one where it's a noun, right? And the a is the the verb, right?" And she's like, "I'm trying to answer something on the phone right now. I can't answer your question." I was like, "Well, you're a lot." help you know like <laughs> um, so much i was tweeting i was tweet i was getting a tech a message ready for facebook and i was like oh well i'll just send it on I'm so much sure for I'm higher right, education you know? right? if you listen to me or if you see my post and stuff you'll real recognize that i didn't get i, I got a like a I'm, I'm not gonna lie i got a 10th grade i education. thought you were this like so intellectual yeah, no when i met you I, I got a 10th grade education and i, I was not like sp- man this guy's smart <laughs> i'm not i'm not smarter than a fifth grader <laughs> no but you so, were <laughs> no but you had passion and sincerity and those two are more important than smart in my opinion, yeah, well, I, that, that desire that like, speaks and I, to I, intellect, I, and I want yes, like exactly when, when when you were just explaining uh, the wanting to learn. Mm-hmm. I've always had a desire to learn things, yeah, and and I noticed that uh, he has a critical mind. He's always asking why, and that's yeah, important. But the critical thing, yeah. But when you're a kid and you ask why, you're a rebel. When you're yes. an adult and you ask why, you run a company. <laughs> that's true. Well, <laughs> I I didn't gain critical thinking until my later 20s you know I, I screwed up a lot as a young adult and the crit- the critical thinking didn't come to me to my later 20s as far as my reality or what i see in my community or or what i've surrounded myself with unfortunately i'm seeing young adults are even getting into their mid adult lives not having that critical thinking i think even someone like my mom unfortunately has never gained critical thinking and she's almost 60 years old and i struggle with that with my friends family it, it, now i'm finding myself as i get older Almost like on an island. The problem with critical thinking is that you can't do it until you're willing to question everything that you believe. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so so I went through a time when I was like, I need to learn how to think critically. I don't know how to think critically. I don't know how to think critically. And, and I couldn't figure out why I didn't know how to think critically. And the reason I couldn't think critically is I wasn't willing to look at everything that I was taught with a questioning eye. And you have to. Mm-hmm. The, the, you're not. You you're have to not, be comfortable enough. You're not broken enough as a person, and and I didn't mean that in a positive sense. Broken by and by that I just mean the initial like shell broken off of you. Uh, until like opening until up. you're willing mm-hmm. to say, well, is Jesus real? You know, sure. is that a thing? Well, like, or is that a story? My, and if you're not willing to ask that question, then you're not going to be willing to ask other questions. Well, my mm-hmm. mom, in, instead of trying to understand like the war in the Middle East, she'd be like, all of them need to be bombed. You know, like that's so like close minded, you know, like like <laughs> she's that typical like redneck American person that's just like all brown people are the same. You know, like <laughs> well, she just doesn't have no critical thinking there. But yeah, but uh, one of the things in college is they're supposed to teach you how to think, not what to think. <clears throat> that changed I think quite if a somebody doesn't ago. know how to think by college, then you have a huge problem already. But <clears throat> right. But we have a huge problem. Probably when, by when the age of 12. At, when I was at Jackson Community College, it was the same thing. I used to take so much heat. For teaching people how to think rather than what to think because the indoctrination was no 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 this is what they have to think yeah. mm, i'm not for that so i did well we have religion like that too oh absolutely 
but this is part of that modern that's this is part of that modern push to what was the first gift god gave man in the in the garden that was the gift of free will right and so man's whole uh, uh, oper- uh, uh, modus operandi is to try to take choice and will and to actually control others that's part of that faction that's sown in the nature of man that's part of the sinful nature is to go well i'm going to tell you how to live because I know better. Well, that's the evil, right? Yes, that we, that's that part we're talking that's about. The evil. Uh, well, when I was growing up, I always heard from you know I grew up in the '80s and, and early '90s. I always heard that you have to be an attorney or a doctor. Every every parent wanted their kid to be a doctor or an attorney. That was like the two professions that that everybody wanted to be. And obviously, <laughs> I didn't become either one. Uh, I don't know any of my friends that became attorneys or doctors or anything in that nature. I, I mean, my best friend's probably the most successful friend I have, and he works for the railroad, and it's a great career. But but I dated a doctor, right? And this is actually when I started getting critical thinking. Uh, I dated a doctor where she had a structured life. Uh, real, her family had a, a certain structure in their life. And I wouldn't say it was so much structured to where it was uh, better, I would say, than the next family or anything of that nature. But they had goals for her at a young age. And I recognized that she had goals. And that was like one of the things that she had that I would say a lot of kids don't have. Like I didn't have that. Or I ha- I went to a school where you had to set your goals every day. Yeah. So you got there in the morning and, and you had to you had to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do in this subject. This is what I'm going to do in this subject. This is what I'm going to do in this subject. Now it was structured in that they would come and check and say, eh, that's not enough for that subject. Sure. You do more. Well, but you, your, your goal at the – your your job was to pick this is what I'm going to work on today. So if I didn't feel like doing a lot of science today, I could get away a day or two with, you know, putting one or two pages in science and five. Yeah, not completing else. a goal doesn't mean you failed in life, right? So like, you you know, but no, not setting a goal is failing in life. That's right. You started this. T- we started this whole conversation with your, your father was mission driven. Yeah. And what I realized now is her family didn't allow her to not be mission driven. She knew from the age of 12, she was going to be a doctor. There was like no if ands or buts. I, I felt called to to teach and preach at the age of eight. I think it was okay. So like her parents would not allow her to fail. So they set her up for success. And I that's I realized that was one of the things that I think families don't know how to do. Like I mean, like as far as I didn't know how to do it with my children, and my mom didn't know how to do it with me, and her mom didn't know yeah, how to you, do it with you, her. You, you can't. Uh, you can't. Some things are caught not taught you know like you catch it from somebody you catch being driven as a person from somebody Mm -hmm. you uh one of the other things that i learned in 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 college was that you're here to learn the teachers we hire these teachers because they're they're men and women of character and we want you to get them the class is secondary the teaching is secondary we want you to know who these people are which is really dangerous too because uh, some of the instructors i had in college (laughs) well also well in order to 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 learn from someone you got to respect them. you got to learn what duplicity is at some point sure sure. but you gotta you gotta you gotta know respect before you even get to that level and i didn't even everything's a lesson in life that's right that's that's right and and i didn't even know respect so i never even respect i only had one respect for oh i'd say two teachers in my whole life i only had like real respect for them I'm just surprised on how much I was missing in life now that I'm seeing it at the age of 40. Moving forward, because we obviously digressed into this yeah, whole- Yeah, it was your fault this it time. It was my fault. What got you to mix the politics and religion together? I mean, like, what really got it- to, I don't know that I mix them, per se. You're, you're doing both. I'm it, really it, careful It's got to be that. difficult to- How do I want to say this? Because- Obviously, you're dealing with people that may not be um, the same type of religion. I, I don't know how I'm saying this right. Uh, they may you're a Christian based uh, religion, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're dealing with someone that maybe d- doesn't accept God into his life, and say he's well, that comes to the humility where you accept the fact that you could be wrong about anything in your life at all. Sure. And that doesn't take away from believing wholeheartedly what you believe, but understanding that I believe other people are completely wrong about how the world works, so there's a possibility I am. So you yeah. There's a humility there. It's like a give and where take. Where you're coming to somebody with humility saying, you well, probably know something I don't know. Well, Be careful you, can, now. What you're saying is going to anger a lot of people. Can you define <laughs> what that word means? Because I'm pretty sure... Which word? 
Humility? Humility. I can almost guarantee, generally speaking, that the average citizen don't even know what that word means. Humility? Well, when I say humility, I mean, I have to think about this for a minute. I don't have a... I, there are certain words that I have where I have a rote definition in my mind. Humility to me is... Okay, so the Bible talks about in honor preferring one another. So what that means is I go... I'm not saying this isn't a declarative statement. I go around and I treat other people like they're more important than I am. So like if you had a dinner party at your house and the president showed up, even if it was like Barack Obama, right mm -hmm. okay he's more important than you at that particular moment sure. in that particular place he's not more important than you in value as a human being or a person sure but he is more important in the sense that he, he the social construct and, in the and social structure. construct so so the bible teaches that you're to go around and treat everybody like they are you're like you're honored to be in their presence sure absolutely that's that's humility mm -hmm. in my opinion well giving and that's what i mean yeah. when i say it anyway mm -hmm. Yeah, giving giving people the the better humility you know. isn't having nothing that you believe, or or just like being soft about it. Humility is saying you might be right, and you know how many people are shocked when you do that. It's really disarming. I've 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 been surprised by how people do not know how to respond when I'm doing an argument or saying mm -hmm. and making an argument, and they come back with what they say, and I just say you might be right. I mean, people are completely blown away. They don't know how to react. See, I used to I used to teach a little thing in my class when I taught at the college, and I was always getting in trouble. They said, you can't teach politics and religion in your class. You can't even talk about them because you're not a political science class or world religions class. And But there's something I always brought up that it was probably the best thing I ever learned about religion I saw on Seinfeld. And that's when Elaine uh, Boozler, she was uh, always kind of bumbly with men. She, she wasn't that good. And she, her and Kramer were standing in the soup Nazi line, and uh, she she swore. And then she looked back, and she said, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Kramer said, why? She said, you see that guy standing back there? He's really churchy. And so, <laughs> really churchy. Yeah, so later on. I don't so, even think I fall into that category anymore. <laughs> but, I used to. Yeah, well, but so they're standing in the line. They get up towards the front of the line, and finally this guy gets up there, and she tries to make small talk with him, and she's horrible at it. So finally she goes, well, I'm, I'm sorry about that earlier. And he goes, about what? And she said, I swore. I know how churchy you are. He goes, what do I care? I'm not the one going to hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I, that taught me the best thing I ever learned about religion. And that is I don't answer for your sin. I answer for mine. So I don't care what you do. You have free will to do whatever you want to. We're afraid I of honesty I, that's right. in our society. It's, it's exactly like we right. hide who we are because we're afraid what people will think about it. Sure. And the fact of the matter is, is that we should all. You know, I have tried to learn recently that I should not get upset with people because of how they feel. Mm-hmm. Because well, I feel you, certain, I don't even like the way I feel sometimes. Yeah. So why well, would I get mad at? Why somebody don't you for give an example? They feel give yeah, examples. Right. Well, so so I'm talking to somebody and I say something and they get upset and then I'm offended that they're upset at me. Well, I shouldn't be. They're 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 feeling a reaction to. It's literally chemicals coursing through their body. Mm -hmm. Like how am I going to blame them for chemicals that got secreted into their body? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like what I'm saying is it gives you an opportunity to not be down on somebody for how they feel. It gives them space to be free, to be who they are. Um, what you're demonstrating is the lack of judgment. I don't, I'm not trying to control everybody. Well, but follow me on this. Usually we get upset at other people because of what we think that they think of us because we are horrible about and judging other people. People aren't thinking about us. So, but, what, but what I'm saying is... <laughs> I'm not thinking about you if you're listening to this. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, the, it's that mirror. We always... It's just like... Yeah, when the things that annoy you most about other people are the things, things that you that don't you, like about that's yourself. That's right. That's exactly... It. And the thing is, when you're raising kids, if you were the type that go out and, and party and try to hide it from your parents, if your kids come home late some night, you're going to assume that they were out partying. And they might not have been doing that. They might have been out having sex. Two phrases... <laughs> two phrases... <laughs> Two phrases that I've learned recently that I really like, and this is from a book called The Confidence Gap, and I'm not endorsing the book, but you should read it just for the for the heck well, of it. Well, why don't you go ahead and just... Um, and, and the two quotes that I learned well, who's are, the author? are these. One, I don't know who the author is. Okay. It was it was a free one from Alexa okay. uh, th like that popped up on my screen, and it was like, this book is free to listen to in January. And, and I was you like, were I waiting like for free playing books, somewhere. You know, like, so, <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so the two quotes that I learned from that book, the two things that I walked away from, and these are so simple that people aren't going to get this. Like mm -hmm. if you're listening right now, you, you need to understand these are very important and you may not get it. And that's not because you're sm I'm smarter. I'm not. I didn't get them at first. And the first one is it's not about me. Mm -hmm. People do not live and do things based upon what they think you're going to think or what you're going to feel. And when you realize that, you stop getting mad at me. Well, why would they do that to me? Well, they're not doing it to you. That's right. They're not thinking of you. <laughs> 
because they're living their life. That's right. And the other thing is, it's not about me. Actually, I, that's the one I meant to say. It's not about me, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, most things we worry about doesn't matter. Mm. It won't matter in 20 days, and it won't really matter yeah, my, in 20 minutes. My daughter's car just caught on Can fire. Can I give you two? Uh, oh, go ahead. Go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. No, give me two. i got to give you two Jerry Fein, Seinfeld. Go, go ahead. I'll tell you Since my daughter's you brought story. up Jerry Seinfeld, okay? No, I was the one that did that. Oh, so. okay. I'll blame you now. <laughs> um, no, my two favorite quotes right now from him is, luck is not a word I associate with myself, which is a pretty good quote. <laughs> Right, I mean, because it's so. Yeah. I mean, that's such a passive yeah. sentence, that's, right? That's like me, me and Mr. Murphy go way back. I I, I see that as more of uh, arrogant. <laughs> my absolute. My well, okay. And then the, my other Jerry Seinfeld. I have no idea what to say to that. My other favorite Jerry Seinfeld quote, since you brought him up, is uh, "Pain is knowledge rushing in to fill a gap." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I like stub my toe. Oh, there is a chair there. Yeah, I now, agree. See, that's something knowledge in rushing in to fill a gap. That's something you'd hear I in the military. Didn't know that that was there. Now I do. Yeah. Well, it uh, it's the same thing though in life though. Yeah. I didn't know she didn't love me, but now I do. Yeah. Right? Pain yeah. is knowledge rushing in to <laughs> fill a gap. Right. right? That's exactly it. Like I thought I was important, but I'm not. Oh. That's why you anger or anger or disappointment is usually unmet expectations. And that's another thing. If you expect certain things of people and you, you say, okay, well, they should, they should treat me like this and they should do these things. And then when they don't, we get disappointed. That's why we get upset. So if we stop putting those unrealistic expectations on other people and start putting the expectation on us, we have a tendency to be less upset with people. Well, can you see me chomping at the bit all the time here? <laughs> yeah. Like you can tell. Yeah. So two things on that. Okay. One, two keys, two keys to enjoying life, in my opinion, and this is all things that I've read, is lower your expectations of others and raise your expectations of yourself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The only person you can affect is yourself. That's right. And if you don't expect as much from other people, you won't be disappointed. Well, is, right. is that a, is there, is there, um, and sometimes you'll be surprised. Is there a level <laughs> of, uh, of lack of empathy there? I think empathy is overrated. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, high five, please. Uh, uh, let empathy, me I don't need to know how you're uh, feeling me, as long as I care that you're feeling. Let me tell that's you, right. Let me tell I don't you, have to know what it feels like to have my leg cut off. I just feel bad that your legs cut off just, and that so should be okay with for you. For the listeners, I'm the third wheel here just so everybody knows because John and Sam here are Fifth like wheel. Ma making out with words here. And, uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, uh, you know, <laughs> the reason why I ask that is because what you guys are discussing is when I went into my relationship, I came into it kind of hard. I uh, I thought I was going to be single all my life. I was in my mid-30s when I met my wife, and when I met her, I was very uh, determined. <laughs> how naive am I? I was very determined on how I thought I, I would be in a relationship or how I thought a relationship should be ran, uh, but I came into it with the idea of, well, if you're going to be mad at me, you're going to be mad at me alone in the corner. Like, cause I'm not, you're the one that's got, is mad. I'm, you know, so like. Doesn't it, affect me. Yeah. It does, it's, it's like, you're the one that's being affected. So I came in kind of hard like that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Why are you guys giving me I the understood stare? That. Oh, I understood that. If glance. you could see the look I was giving right now. <laughs> It well, was like, are you serious? Yeah, I know. I, how arrogant. Exactly how many marriage books have you not read? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how arrogant and chauvinistic. I'm not married and I'm not even close to being married, but I have read a lot of marriage yeah, books. Yeah, how chauvinistic <laughs> does that sound, right? <laughs> so like, so you just be mad over there in the corner, and when you're done, can you make dinner, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Without poison? It's going to go over like a hot rock. This is, can, can, without rat poison. What, what kind of rational thinking was I thinking? Well, you know, what was I thinking with going into it? So, so you, you weren't. The, the funny thing is, is I'm not like that anymore, right? And and I figured since you're still married you know? <laughs> and alive, <laughs> barely, right? Uh, barely on both. We've had enough murder in this county for a while, I think. <laughs> well, go, coming into that relationship so that hardcore, right? <laughs> coming into this that was off camp. That was off uh, mic on purpose, in case you were wondering. <laughs> well, um, coming into this relationship, relationship so hard like that, and and uh, although I'm not like that anymore, uh, it still has. If your wife is listening. Can you verify that <laughs> she? Obviously, that's used against me now in the heated of arguments that I have a lack of em empathy. That's because you gave her the uh, you gave her the. Uh, I'm going to take ammunition. a wild guess. Your wife does not listen to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. This is why we do this because we can't talk at home. <laughs> oh goodness, I can talk so, at home. I so, drive people so nuts. I you, talk too much. When you guys are discussing this this type of topic, that's 
that's instantly what I'm thinking is a lack of empathy. And like you said, it's a little probably overrated. Empathy is overrated. Yeah. And, and I and I agree with you guys. I don't want people to feel bad when I feel bad. Why should they feel bad when I feel bad? Care that I feel bad yeah. and love me, but don't sit in the corner with me. No, yeah. tell me, like, give me a couple minutes. And if I'm not out in a couple minutes of my little self-wallowing, you better come over there and that's kick like my butt. That's like saying, because I'm having a heart attack, I'm upset that the, you two aren't having one too. Right, right, yeah. No, well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> empathy, empathy is important, and it's more important the closer the relationship is. But I'm not trying to have an intimate relationship with every human being in the world. Well, I, I find I have a hard time dealing with people that play the victim a lot. And I talked to John about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. Even like my neighbor last night, I took to the hospital and he can get into these like moments because he's, he's an alcoholic and, and he gets in these moments where he sub, I don't know what he want to do to subconsciously play. Like we know each other really well and we could play off each other without even talking, but he'll like ask he'll ask for something in particular like he'll ask like um uh should i be doing this or like john i can't believe i've done and and i'm so real with him i'm like just shut the hell up you know quit being a little girl you know i'll say stuff like that to him and so like i keep it super real with him and not i don't allow him to be the victim i'm I'm becoming more like that more cynical is that the word well i know it's what it is is real and, and and but but i'm i'm not quite to the point where i'm uh, an asshole about it? No, I am. <laughs> I'm not quite to the point where I've learned how to balance that with 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 empathy and with uh, with with care. Obviously, it doesn't because I get frustrated with people, and I'm just like, you know, this is a stupid question. You should be able to figure this out on your own. You well, know? it doesn't work with everybody, obviously, yeah. right? Some people, I, 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 I but some I, people respond very well to being told exactly what you. Yeah, think. like the people that don't uh, respond very well typically are not in my everyday life obviously so like when they're in my everyday life they tend to take it on a little bit easier because they know who I am I mean Jesus got a crowd going see I interrupted did you catch that Um, so even Jesus and I didn't apologize either I just kept going no yeah you're good no so Jesus Jesus in his ministry he would come to a point in time where he was like okay there's too many people following me and then he would say something along the lines of you must eat my flesh and drink my blood to be a follower of me. And people would be like, oh, yeah, I'm not really into that. I'm going to go now. And the ones that got it stayed and the ones that don't. And that's how I feel about my life. Okay, the ones that get it will stay. The ones that don't get it will go. And that's sure. fine. They don't have to like me. I don't care. I mean, I do care, but I don't care. I shouldn't care anyway. Exactly. Well, last week, or well, a couple of days ago, my daughter called me. Her car caught on fire. You know, she was stressing out because I would be stressing out. If of course, she owes money to the mob. Right. But. Well, <laughs> well, it wasn't a big situation where exploded it exploded on the side of the road. I don't it, know what it was. Happened, it was just know. a simple thing where her. The, I'm well, from Chicago, thing, I mean, so like these are real things that happen. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, her her the fuel I'm kidding the, 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 the fuel line or the fuel rail. Uh, her boyfriend broke a piece off of it, and it must have been like squirting a little bit of fuel onto the motor, and the motor heated up and caught on fire. Well. Fire Don't di- let that man touch a car. <laughs> well, it didn't hurt. She didn't get hurt or nothing of of that nature. It was it was a stress because you're on the road and it breaks down. You got to sure. pull over. You, your car's on fire. You're probably going to lose your car. So you're dealing with that stress. So she she's texting me and calling me, and I was I was like, it's just a car, you know. Like at the end of the day, like what do you what has that kind of stress achieved in life? You know, but and, sometimes that's that verbal slap in the face. Like remember on airplane where the one passenger's freaking out and people are lining up to hit him with a ball bat and everything else to well, knock him into reality. Sometimes people need that verbal slap in the face. I do the same thing. Sometimes I stress over things that are stupid. My wife looks at me and goes, what's wrong with you? Did you say <laughs> the movie? But you, you need people in your life did, like did, that. Did yeah. you say the movie Airplane? Yeah. What, what the hell? What's it, what is that? <laughs> That's right. I forgot you two young pups. <laughs> I, I've seen the cover of it. Like I've seen the the cover for the VHS. Is it Kareem, Kareem yeah. Abdul Jabbar in that movie? What's that? Is Kareem Abdul Jabbar in that movie? I He's do the pilot, believe he isn't is he? in that movie. But Jabbar is a fun name, yeah, isn't it? Most of our podcasts have been about mor- morals, uh, Sam and John and I are typically we like to joke around with the best of them too. Yeah. But when it when it comes down to politics and, and the seriousness of I, maybe John and I are taking it a little too serious. We're, what we notice is in in the world of morality, we, we're finding it hard. <clears throat> Because John and I believe all taxation that's not uh, exercise tax is me, is a form. Can I preface this? Yeah, go ahead. Quick. Go ahead. P- part of the part of this thing is w- we get into arguments with uh, people that are in uh, elected positions, and it seems like it always comes down to that. Well, it's legal. We can do it because it's legal. And my answer to that, and it, it, this irritates a lot of people, but I say it, uh, and that is, it's legal for me to tongue kiss my sister, but should I? <laughs> because it's not moral. It's probably okay. not moral for me to do I, is that, it but legal? it's legal. I don't know. Maybe it shouldn't be. But you but you see what I'm saying? Legal doesn't mean that it's moral. That doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean that it's right. I would just agree with because that it's statement. legal. 
And so we hold our elected position, our elected officials to to a moral position, well, not uh, necessarily to a legal. Not and only much right. not, not only is it a moral position. Uh, we, I would dis- I, I would disagree that people do that. I mean, you may be right that that's what should be done, but mm-hmm. I think most people don't. Well, also no, don't they, elect people for their morals. No, well, I mean, also clearly, also we hold them to a higher standard for some reason, right? We, we, we should. We like I hold Sam Nutter here as a pastor to a higher standard of of moral conduct than say myself. Well, that's usually what is so bad on pastors' kids. That's why pastors' kids are so abused. <laughs> By the, I was a pastor's kid. Okay, well then you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Uh, the the church has a tendency to hold the children to the same standard as what the pastor is being held to, and that's not necessarily fair so, so or right. Adam for Adam Stockford, for an example, I got to hold him to a higher standard because of his position. Now whether that's I should do that or not, I'm just saying that's what I for some well, reason define higher standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I'm, I'm what I'm like. I, what is he expected to do differently than you? Ex- well. I'm telling you, as a general Joe, or as an average put, Joe, I'm just... I'm put fi- his pants on two legs at a time. <laughs> I'm finding, I can do that. I'm finding that I'm passing judgment. I do it while I'm in the shower, right after the water goes off. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding there are towels <laughs> built into my pant legs. I could be Mormon. It's like special underwear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I find myself... Sorry for all you Mormons <laughs> listening. I know uh, there's, this is... He's not sorry. He's not sorry. He's laughing. I'm not sorry, but he's if you're offended, here. I... I, I <laughs> I'm sad for your feelings because well, I respect you in every way. <laughs> well, I find myself passing judgment, you know, and I and I got to I got to understand that I can't do that. I have no, that that's not true though. The Bible says, uh, uh, "Judge not that you be not judged." And then it says in the next passage, I believe it says, "But judge righteous judgment." Righteous means rightly; it means to do things right. So it's okay to judge. Is somebody doing something the right way that is completely justified uh, to do? But see, you said something important. They're doing. It comes down to God can judge the heart of man. Man cannot. But man can judge the action of well, that, man. That's the humility that's to say, I, I may be wrong, but I think he's kind of a jerk. He may be a really nice guy, but I think he's kind of a jerk. Or, know, or he whatever. is a nice well, guy, but I can't stand what he's doing why, there. Why I can does, still be friends well, with like, him. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean somebody has to stop doing it. That's part of humility, too. And that's part of living in the real world. I mean, we, we live in a, in a society Boy, we hear where, that all the time, don't we, John? Everybody has to not do everything I don't like. Why? Well, but you see, we've got this problem in Hillsdale County. I see this a lot, and that is the... I don't care what you're doing. It, as long as we're friends, just then don't anything... don't do it at my house, okay? Well, as long as we're friends, then I have to approve of everything that you do or defend it, because we're friends. Well, that's very shallow. But if, I, but if you do one thing that I don't like, then I can't like anything that you do. I, we see this all the time. I, I didn't see it near as bad until I started running for political office. Then I really see it, and that is that... Uh, I have this thing that we can be friends and you can do something that I don't approve of and I'll tell you to your face and I'll I'll tell everybody that yeah I don't approve of for, that for those that doesn't mean that you're a horrible person you have the authority I think in my opinion to say this because I didn't vote for you mm-hmm. and you know that yeah and I had a sign in my yard absolutely. and everything and and we have still always had a cordial oh absolutely uh, uh, relationship and talk and everything and I've always respected that immensely and and it's always meant a lot to me but yeah because 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 I could be wrong. Well, I, we get into this. We get into this. When I don't believe I can't be wrong, then everybody else must be wrong. Well, this is part of this fraternal i this this fraternal idea that's that's pushed in our society, and that is, as long as we belong to this fraternity together, we have to defend one another, no matter what it is that you do. So you might do a hundred things right and one thing wrong, but I'm still going to defend that one thing wrong you did because. We're in this fraternal do you, organization. Do you think the average person? Why does the average person hold politicians or doctors or or pastors into uh, a higher standard? Why do Why do we do that as a society? Because when they fail, it makes us feel good about ourselves. <laughs> good answer. You, you think that's really it? <laughs> yep. So like, good answer. Because w- w- I I had a, a black- nothing makes somebody that is uh, like unself aware. And not present, li- not living present, then nothing does them more happiness or makes them more happy than watching somebody well, else. Well, I had a, a because a, you're not going to succeed if you're not a present person and if you're not self-aware. Well, the other thing is uh, these videos on YouTube wouldn't be so great. Uh, you know, these fail army watching people fail. Those wouldn't be so highly rated if people didn't or love like to watch like people the fail. Modern day like, like funniest home videos. Yeah, like when people yeah. slip and fall yeah, and they laugh at them. Uh, well, I had a black pastor that was a friend of mine. We played basketball a lot of times together. He's got a black friend now. I know. Yeah, not racist. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that's what that was all <laughs> well, about. Well, well, the reason why I say that is because he used to listen to Snoop Dogg music. 
and he was a pastor. So like it was always kind of comical uh, growing up with him, and he would listen to like Snoop Dogg or Dr. Dre, and like we're like gangster rapping in the car together. It's like, what are you doing to that? Mm-hmm. You know, and then, then the next, <laughs> the, and then the next day, I don't know if I should say the word. You know? Yeah, like, the, 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 ne- the next we'll day, we have to bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, the next day we're. Uh, uh, I think I'll just refrain this time. You know, maybe next, next time. day we're in church together. You know, it's yeah. it was sort of strange to see that out of the pastor. You know, so like, well, um, I, you know, I, like, I grew up Baptist. I it, it, uh, I, Baptist, it, the standard for being a pastor is I, way higher. Yeah, I, I, I had people didn't want me to be become the pastor because I was unmarried. It's very yeah. lawfully, isn't it? Like, is that the word I'm yeah, using? Like, it's very, litigious. It's very uh, straight. It's like, it's dogmatic. I would say okay. more Baptist. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's a there's a there's a good joke that I always used to tell, and I can say it because I'm a Baptist, and that's a, the guy that uh, you know Saint Peter's taking him around heaven, and he's trying to decide where he wants to spend eternity, and he can't decide. And I know where finally this is they're going. taking this, and he's going to a long, long, far away, and he looks over and he sees way off in the distance these people, and he goes, "Hey, Saint Peter, who are them?" And he goes, "Shh, shh, shh." shh. He said, "Those are the Baptists. They think they're the only ones here." <laughs> <laughs> Those are called Big B Baptists. Yeah. Big B Baptists. Big B Baptists. That stands for like Baptist Briders. There is actually a sect that now this is a parenthetically speaking. Okay. There, there's a group of Baptists that think only Baptists can go to heaven. Not not that other people go to hell necessarily, but if you're but not, they a just Baptist, don't go to heaven. You you're outside the city. Yeah. You're outside the city. You don't city. get the golden. Right. But, no, but what, what I was bringing outside the city sounds kind of fun. Yeah. I'm not a really a city person. You but, know what I'm saying? What I was bringing up in that is that growing up Baptist, we judged everybody for everything, even though we were doing the same thing they were doing. Yeah, we're all they sinners. Were wrong, yes, don't we go to the okay. movies, but let's rent let's it go watch and bring a movie. it home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, understanding that, I was really kind of, I that was my reality growing up. And then I went into the military. A good friend of mine, Ken Young. <laughs> Must from, have been shocking. Yeah, Ken Young from Texas. He was a Baptist too. I never met Southern Baptist, you know. He would, uh, he would curse like a sailor and praise God at the same time. And I was like, Ugh. I couldn't understand understand that but i started to realize that's when i started to realize and started to grow as a christian and started to grow in my faith and start understanding a lot of these things that i didn't understand growing up it doesn't make me mean to the baptist but it does make me be able to tell some jokes about them <laughs> well sam sam in your opinion i'm smiling in your opinion what is morals what are morals yeah what are morals Oh, you had to ask it that way. Yeah, right, those, those little mushrooms that grow. The morels, yeah. Morel oh, mushrooms. No, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I'm actually. not. E- I'm not either. I don't. I, they're too it's earthy. It's like for having me. a steak that smashes itself. Well, I, it's like a dirt <laughs> steak, you know, like. <laughs> ugh. It's, that's He's what like, it tastes you want some like. Fried mushrooms. I like. They're bad enough on their own. You don't have to fry them. <laughs> well, do you, do you got the red ones with the white dots on them? Yeah, no, those are the wrong ones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those are the wrong. Ones. I mean, I'm willing to try the other kind, but anyway, <laughs> they don't talk. taste like steak. That's gonna go on the podcast. <laughs> anyway, I'm totally okay with it. By the way, um, no m- morals. I uh, I mean morals. If I, I again, is, this is, would be a word a, I don't have like a rote definition for. Well, it. is morals different for everybody, or is that is that a, like a how do I say a, uni- a universal word for everybody? Like, can everybody understand what morals are? A concept. Um, you know, Prager University did a really, really, really good one on morals and where morals come from. Um, yeah, but that's that Prager University. That's like a really Christian. Uh, no, conservative, no, no, no. they're conservative, One very view. conservative. But and I, not, and, I, and I like them all, almost all those videos. I, I like a lot of them. They do a lot of good <laughs> things, but. Uh, <laughs> I, there's points I disagree with a little bit. Uh, like I hope so. Like one. Yeah. If everybody's thinking the same thing, somebody's not thinking, you know? Well, that's the problem. Most people aren't. Um, uh, I think we're, we're the, 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 or, or, the exception or here. Or they like are, and they're not willing to say it. I, I, well, that's true. I think we're thinking, our way of thinking is less of what the majority's thinking. Our way of thinking, or my way of thinking, I don't know about yours, but I think we think in a similar way. It's uncomfortable. People like to have structure. They like to be told yes. what to think. They like to, to, to have, you know, A, B, C. These are the three things you must do to be happy. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is that that doesn't work that way. No. Happiness today is different than happiness yesterday because happiness is what's happening to me, and it's not always good. Joy is, comes from the inside, mm-hmm. and you experience joy by being, not doing. Yeah. So, so is morals universal? Morals, uh, no, well, obviously not because people don't follow. Well, them. I say they are the ability oh, of morals are universal. Meant, yeah. Of course, yeah. Are they practiced the, the universally? Go, go no. Again. The, the, the ability for morals is universal. Okay. But what are they practiced? No, they're not practiced universally. I, if, if, okay, so when you say are morals universal, there's two, in my mind, two possible things you can mean. Are Does everybody have morals and or... Are all morals like? Is there a set standard and yeah? Is there like? Well, first off, is there a set? Is, is there a set 
definition for morals. I think there is. I think if you look at every uh, known religion, yeah. But what if you're non-religion? Very, morals I know come where you're from. Going with this. Morals come from. I read the notes. Uh, oh, see, I didn't get them. I didn't get those. That's yeah, okay. My email must. Be when we okay. when anyway. we had a, like a two-hour conversation <laughs> oh, the other before day, I come, okay. we talked about how I, I don't. What was it? It's because I don't play ba- basketball, isn't it? Okay, so like, and, and, and you know, I don't know if this is the way you said it, but you told me that. Uh, well, I actually, I think I brought it up to you, and I, I was talking about. Oh yeah, that's right. Because I, 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 I got There has to be a feeling that there's something greater than you and good for you to have morals.